iPhone 10 is one of the most popular phones of the season, and yet it's one of the most expensive smartphones you could buy, so better make sure you protect it. So I'm usually a caseless guy. Typically, I prefer using my phone without a case. However, I have made quite the exception for my iPhone 10 because it cost me so much money. I want to make sure it lasts a long, long time. I want to make sure it stays protected. So I just wanted to go over some of the cases a lot of different companies have sent me as well as ones that I prefer myself. And the first one comes from Kadabi. I believe that's the way it's pronounced. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, forgive me because that's how Google Translate pronounces it. But anyway, first case I have for you here is kind of a bluish purple mold that has an interesting slant gradient next to the camera bulge. One nice thing about a lot of these cases I talk about today is they eliminate that camera bump, which a lot of people do not like on their iPhone 10. And it's a little transparent on the back. It lets you still see the Apple icon and the iPhone text, but now provides a kind of plastic slippery feel that makes it still very easy to tuck into the pocket while also having a rubbery exterior that makes it very grippy and easier to hold. More secure. It even adds a little plus and minus to your volume buttons as a lot of the cases I talk about today do that as well and definitely has a rigid feeling to it I feel like my phone's a lot safer now but I'd personally say I'm not a big fan of the color I can't decide if it's purple or kind of a blue not really sure in another way I like to rate these cases is how well they can come off and with this case you kind of have to struggle with it a little bit you kind of work from the edges and boom it's off see this is, oh there's the flashlight jeez because I like using my phone caseless usually if I'm just at home or at the office and I have surfaces like my mouse pad or a couch or a cushion that this can rest on without scratching it I'll use it caseless but because I go out and about quite often I have to make sure that one of these cases is nearby this is an interesting one but definitely not my favorite so the next case I have to share with you is from a different company they are known as Supcase. like what's up and this one I've actually really quite enjoyed it has a transparent background of course installing it is not terribly difficult snaps on fairly easily so you can still see your space gray color on the back which I like retaining your Apple logo and the iPhone text as well as eliminating the camera bump it it has a rubber exterior, which makes it kind of grippy, so it doesn't slide as much on hard surfaces. And the real thing that stands out to me about this case is the redesigned buttons. They do not resemble the iPhone X's actual buttons. They go with this slanted design where you have the plus and minus, and same with the power. They just kind of have dedicated areas for pressing the buttons, and they're very fun to click around now, now that buttons kind of look different and act different. I really do like this case, but I would say that the failure of the sub case is that with a plastic transparent background like this, it attracts a whole lot of fingerprints that it's almost impossible to get rid of. I've tried to wipe this on my shirt and with cloth, and no matter what, there always seems to be some noticeable fingerprints, even though I take it out of the case and I clean the inside of it. So it's very hard to find a time when this does not have fingerprints on it. But still, nice that the back is smooth, so it goes into your pocket very easily, but also the sides are grippy. And again, really like those buttons. Taking the case off is about the same as the last device. A little bit of a hassle. You have to kind of work from the corners. But the last two cases were pretty pretty similar in how you put them on and how durable they are. Sorry, I'm not going to be doing any drop tests today, but if you want something extremely durable, I'm pretty sure I don't even have to test this to prove it to you. Check out the military grade sub case, awkwardly named Unicorn Beetle. That is the name of this case series. Now, this is the only case I'm talking about today that actually comes in two different pieces. Now, this is not my particular favorite kind of case. This is actually kind of frustrating to me because first of all, it has a built-in screen protector, which Forgive me if I criticize this case too much. It's not a poorly made case. I just think if you want to quickly get rid of the beautiful aesthetic and design of your iPhone 10 for the sake of durability, perhaps you work in construction or perhaps you throw your phone a lot, this is what it's good for. That's not me, but I'll still go over it with you. It has holes cut out into the plastic for the earpiece, all the sensors in the notch, which looks kind of odd. There's four holes and a long bar. So that attaches to the front of the iPhone 10 first. Almost feels like you're scratching the phone as you install it. It snaps on with this plastic layer and then that prohibits you from using the button so you have to put on this rubber exterior. You're able to fit this rubber case on, which definitely is a specific process. You have to be careful on how you do this. It almost feels like an entirely different phone. Feels very durable, very rigid. Luckily, the holes line up perfectly, so Face ID still works. But the phone is heavier now. Now even the silencer switch has like a rubber seal on it, including the lightning port. So maybe if you have a job where you 
you know your phone's going to get very, very wet, perhaps submerged all the time. I bet having this little lightning rubber seal could help with that. It does definitely change the UI experience now that every time you swipe up to go home, you've got this giant plastic outer rim all along the edges. Very, very heavy duty, and I'm sure I could drop this from basically any height and it would stay okay. But again, it's almost like changing the entire user experience. Now the phone is bulky, it's harder to fit in your pocket. So they even plan for that with this belt buckle. So this thing clips to the outside of your pants and then you don't even have to put your phone in your pocket. You put it on the outside. So by the time you snap it into this, we have this giant contraption that has converted your very slim, very thin looking iPhone 10 into this transformer of a phone case. And now I know you'd never actually hold it like this. You'd belt it to your pants here and then pull it out when you need it. But still, extremely overkill. If you're out there and you're looking for a phone case that will prohibit your iPhone 10 from being damaged, this is the one I have to recommend, but definitely not one I'm going to be using. I tried it just for a little bit and went, no, no thanks. I don't work in a job where this is useful, so I'm going to stick with my thinner cases. And now, get to watch the incredible experience of me trying to take off. Pull that off and boom! We're back to the slimness of the iPhone 10 with that premium feeling. I can feel the stainless steel again, and it feels good. Now, let's go to something that's polar opposite. Now, going back to Kadabi, we have the thinnest phone case I'll talk about today that I don't really think is going to provide you much protection, but will prevent the glass from actually scratching. This is not a case that is going to prevent your phone from dropping, but if you know your phone glass can scratch a lot in your pocket, from keys or whatever and you want to just prevent that backside so that it doesn't collect a lot of scratches over time this phone case slips on very very easily it almost feels like paper and by the time it's on it almost doesn't even feel like you have a phone case on this is borderline what like a D brand skin would actually feel like this is the one phone case I'm talking about today that actually does not remove the camera hump it's so thin that the camera hump is actually still there so it'll still rock just slightly when you rest it on a desk but if you're into phone cases that do slight protection but do not bulk out the size of your iPhone 10 like the last one did. This is a really great one for that. It does not even cover the buttons. So the power button, the volume are still the original ones. It lines up with the speaker holes and lightning port just perfectly at the bottom and retains the phone's extreme portability. So putting it in your pocket is no problem. Fairly slick, but just a slight grip to it. There's no difference in the texture from the back to the sides. Very, very basic case. But if you're going for protection and you don't want to sacrifice its portability and its sleekness, you can definitely still feel the iPhone 10's portability and lightness while still remaining protected with this particular extra extra thin case. This next phone case was definitely not sent to be but by far one of my favorites as you may have expected the official Apple silicone case. What I love about these cases is that they provide a fair amount of protection while being very very easy to put on. So I got my iPhone 10 here as soon as I want to slap on a silicone case I just slip it in like this and boom it's on. There's no snap there's no flex. The silicone bend just enough so that it can wrap around the 10 and it does not fall off. I've never had a silicone case fall off and yet it provides a fair amount of rubber to the fact that I feel like I can toss this around and it's not going to break the phone. It of course is made by Apple so you get to retain an actual new Apple logo on top and unlike older silicone cases the Apple icon is flush with the actual case. It's not made of a different material. They also have this interesting felt texture on the inside that rests the iPhone 10's glass against it and I feel like that keeps it very well protected. It feels like a very premium case. So much so that I actually like getting multiple ones of these because sometimes I want my iPhone 10 to be in basic black and other times I like this blue cobalt case because I am Talos of tech. Gotta go with the blue color scheme. So alternating between these are both very good. They still have their flaws though. They almost kind of collect fingerprints from your hand's oil like over time you can start to see little wish washies on them if that's a word you know what I mean? Like, like there's weird textures on top of them. Like they don't age super well. As silicone cases get older, you can start to see wear and tear on them. But still, I really, really like them and I could see myself getting a product red one or a white one in the near future. And once again, I love being able to just easily take off an iPhone 10 silicone case. They pull up very easily. So for the last one today, we have one more rubberish looking one that has kind of the same texture as the extra thin one, but with a slight more bit of protection. So luckily, because this is rubber, it's a bit easier to snap snap onto the iPhone 10 and then it provides kind of this more symmetrical design carbon fiber Kevlar looking pattern next to the camera bump which is an interesting approach and then on top of that they add back the volume icon buttons with the plus and minus but no power icon for side button that's fine but either way this is definitely a very grippy case as well and I also like the design of it because it goes with that basic stealth black color so it's a bit more minimal and will definitely keep the phone a bit more protected it's slightly thinner than a silicone case but I definitely stuck with it 
for a while. I took off the silicone cases and just went with this and goes in the pocket easy, still remains fairly protective, but not adding too much width to the actual sides and top and bottom of the device. So lots of pros and cons with all the cases we saw today. I know some people really like the Apple leather cases. My issue with those is they kind of scratch fairly easily, but I understand the texture of them is a lot nice. They probably slip into the pocket better because the silicone cases are a bit more rubbery, which means that when you're putting them in your pocket, they can kind of get stuck on the cotton a bit easier. But either way, I really like most of these iPhone 10 cases, and these are the ones that I have to choose from. And I wanted to thank the companies who sent them to me for letting them give them a shot, and I hope you guys found some that you might be interested in. If there's cases you enjoy or cases you think I should try, let me know in the comments below. And I also wanted to personally thank each and every one of you for watching me throughout 2017, as this is the last video from Talos of Tech in 2017. And not to worry, 2018 is going to be an even bigger year for Talos of a lot going to change. We're going to see tremendous growth, I'm sure, and I'm very, very excited and very, very grateful for all of the success that you guys have made possible for Talos. Of The fact that companies like the ones that are making these cases are sending me their product is because of you guys. You're the ones who have promoted me and gotten to this point, and I'm so eternally grateful for it. Thank you. So without further ado, this is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you next year. Happy New Year's, everyone.